Well, what we should do is talk about uh, what happened in the Australian summer as we move forward in episode one on our road to the ashes. And we should recap it. How'd you see it? We lost to India. Yeah. Good or bad, June? Uh, I'd say bad, but it was a great summer of cricket. The, the standard of cricket was really good. I thought the test matches were enthralling um, right to the end of the fifth day in, in most cases, although uh, Adelaide happened pretty quickly with, with one session. But um, I think India will be overwhelmingly happy with their performance to beat Australia 2-1 in Australia with the squad they had. They had a lot of injuries. On the other hand, I think Australia would be very disappointed. They were in winning situations in yeah. all those test matches and couldn't nail the victory. So I'd say Australia will come out of that summer a little bit disappointed. Yeah, were you disappointed, Justin? I mean, I know that you guys performed pretty well, but overall, um, I know you would have wanted to win. You, your take on it all? Yeah, of course, Beach. Of course, we're disappointed. It's, it's rare that we lose summers in Australia, so it was disappointing. Um, that said, it's always fascinating to me about Australian psyche. I remember back in our playing days, I, I, I've talked about this often. In 2005, when we lost the Ashes to England, uh, when Vaughan was the skipper, and in 2001, when we lost the uh, to India, after we had him on toast, after we won 16 straight Test matches. I'd come home, oh, that's our Australian friend, that's the best cricket I've ever seen in my life. I said, yeah, but we lost. And a lot of people were saying the same this summer. It <laughs> yep. was incredibly disappointing from our point of view. But with everything that had gone on with COVID and getting India out here, um, you know, it was an amazing series. For, to, for the last two tests to go down to the last day and we were in the box seat and India to draw it and then win it, Great credit to them, and we've got to look look at how we can get better for the Ashes next summer. Well, Vaughn, you're probably lucky we didn't have you over here for the summer commentator because that would have been unbearable. <laughs> um, how do you see it? <laughs> well, there's, there's no shame in losing to India's third eleven, is there? You know, they're a good side. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. They've got a good production line. No, I'll be honest. I mean, I mean it was a brilliant series to watch. We, we were right in the heart of lockdown, uh, and I've never known so many people in the UK – only on Zoom and on WhatsApp messages because we weren't allowed to meet anybody, kind of just talk about, you know, Aussie cricket, India cricket, because it was such a, a brilliant series to watch from, you know, the Aussies pounding them in the Adelaide Oval, 36, all that. Virat going home to to be uh, obviously next to his wife, uh, giving birth. Uh, no one gave India a chance. I don't care who you are. No one gave India a chance of bouncing back. The way that they bounced back and the Jinka Rahani's captaincy in Melbourne was spectacular. And then they go to Sydney and, and the Aussies just pummel them for a few days. And, and there's nothing like a last day batting out for a draw. I don't know about Test cricket, but it's just a, a great spectacle when you've got a team just trying to hang in there. Uh, a little bit of banter, Ravi Ashwin taking a little bit of a, a copping from behind the stumps. Again, don't mind that at all. And then the, the Aussies arriving at the Gabba and you think, well, it's all over. Mm. The Aussies just can't get beat, beaten at the Gabba. Uh, they'll, they'll steamroll them. And a few of the young Indians, you know, Washington Sundar, exceptional. Uh, and, and I thought actually the whole tour, it was, we knew Rishabh Pant was a player. We all know that he's a, he's got something very, very special. But I thought, you know, particularly in those last two test matches, you know, Rishabh Pant came to light and it was a brilliant series. When I can only imagine um, how much red wine Ravi Shastri drank. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you <laughs> this, yeah, I'll ask you for this question and I know the answer um, anyway, but I'll ask it. In Melbourne, the MCG test, Alfie, did you take India a little bit cheaply given there was no Coley and the way the, the domination in the first test in Adelaide? Do you think subconsciously you may have just taken the foot off, off the pedal going into Melbourne? Oh, certainly not consciously, Gene. We talked about it. I, I knew that Vera had gone back. Uh, but we also know, I know we all joke and Vaughn jokes and a lot of people went about India's second and third 11, but the truth is, I mean, in a country of one and a half billion people who love cricket, if you make the first 11 of one and a half billion people who love cricket, you're going to, have a, you're going to be pretty tough and you're going to be a pretty good player. And when the opportunities come, you've got to be ready to grab them. And we saw that with that exceptional young talent. They were, they were fierce. They were... And what, what my main observations at the moment are that we're in this real arm wrestle with India and England on the field, and it's going to be fascinating to see who can break free of that or if one of the teams can mm. break free. You look at all the um, score lines in white ball cricket and test cricket over the last couple of years, it's a really, really tough battle at the moment, and we saw that again this summer. Unfortunately, we fell the wrong side of the, the ledger. 
I, I, I look at it, uh, guys, and think I don't know if we're any closer to picking our solid top six. I mean, often you think at the start of a summer yep. you can go walk away and go, okay, I reckon five out of six, yes, is always going to top, but I think we've got to, got to find an opener still and five and six. That's, well, that's what worries me. I think we've got number six, Cameron <laughs> Green. Yeah. England's even worse, just quietly. We'll talk I'm going to say, are you talking about England or Australia? Well, both, actually. <laughs> but, um, look, I think during the summer, obviously, Will Pekoski, he was marked down as one of the openers. He had, obviously, the injuries, which didn't help. Um, you know, there was players in and out of form. But you're right, BJ, I, I think an opener and a number five are our two spots that mm. uh, we need to nail down. And Pekoski, uh, if he's fit and well, I think he's definitely going to be one of those spots. Whether he's an opener, I don't know, Alfie. What do you think of Will if he's right, where's his best spot in the batting order? Well, he's got this incredible temperament, Gene. He bats for, I think he's got two or three double hundreds in domestic cricket already, which very, very, it's rare for young players to do. That's what I love about Cameron Green. That's what I loved about a young Steve Smith or Phil Hughes or Michael Clark or Damian Martin or Ricky Ponting. They make huge runs. So his temperament's excellent. And I know he opened for Victoria. My view's always been if you bat in the top three, you can bat anywhere in the order. So I love the fact that he's batting in the top three for Victoria. Where he fits in, time will tell, and depending on opportunity and timing. Well, I suppose Vaughan, he wasn't in the contracted list that's just come out for Cricket Australia, Vaughan. So, I mean, I, you know, listening to Trevor Hones, basically saying that it's open for, up for grabs, that position's up, up for grabs in the, in the top order. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at both teams and, and both teams have uh, kind of similar traits. They've got some real high-class senior pros, um, incredible players ac- across, you know, like Steve Smith, Labuschagne, Joe Root, Ben Stokes, Josh Butler, you know, Pat Cummins, Hazelwood and Co. They're, they're a high class. And then there's a, a mixture around there that I think both teams are just trying to find the, 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 the missing links. And the missing links um, from the Aussies are, are young players that are coming through. I look at Pekoski, I've seen a lot of him uh, online, looks a player. I think, you know, those bounces, the way that he's been hit a number of times will be what I'd be trying to challenge him with. I'd be certainly challenging him with those short ball, particularly flaps at the pull shot every now and again as well. Uh, but he looks a player. Uh, Cameron Green, I'll say, I said that many times of the winter, you found a player. There's no question he's going to be a, a superstar going forward. Um, you can see everything about the way that he plays, uh, his body language. Um, even when he bowls, he's not got the wickets yet, but you can see that he's going to get wickets in time. Uh, so, unfortunately, you've found a very good player in Cameron Green. Um, whether he can match some of that Ben Stokes, I'm, I'm sure you're hoping he can do, but he looks that kind of uh, player that's got a similar uh, chance of being that all-rounder that you can build your side around. Um, England, England have got you know a similar kind of problem at the top of the order where you know they've gone to India, they've been blown away, and, and you've got three youngish players, or not youngish, but players that haven't played a lot of test cricket in Rory Burns, Dom Sibley and Zach Crawley that had real poor tours. And now they've got seven test matches in, in, in the English summer to try and find form, find some kind of rhythm, get some confidence, um, because you'd want to arrive in Australia in November time as a younger player with at least a few hundreds behind you to get the, the kind of confident flows going through the mind, because we all know that playing in Australia is up there with the biggest challenges. Well, batting was a problem, but I, I think the bowling... For Australia, um, the two test matches at the Gabba and Sydney, and then you go back to Heading. That's three games we should have won, especially with that bowling attack. So I, I don't know what lessons need to be learned out of that. Alfie, have you have you got thoughts on that quality of bowling lineup on paper not being able to do the job? Is there something there that um, you can work on? There's a lot of discussion post series that that we could have rotated the bowlers. But I always put it back to the people who make those. It's easy with hindsight, but when we go into the Gabba, for example, June, and we say, well, who are you going to rest? Are you going to rest Cummins, Stark, Hazelwood or Lyon? And at the Gabba, it's a, it's a big call. It's easy after we didn't um, we didn't finish off the job, but they are all high-class bowlers. Um, I understand what England are doing now with their rotation policy. It would be, be interesting to see if that works moving forward. But, you know, they're really, really great bowlers and, you know, we've just got to keep finding ways. We've got to keep finding ways. But I certainly back those guys in to do the job, that's for sure. Well, well Vaughn, I mean, there was plenty of talk about over here in Australia, but tactically maybe the Aussies got it wrong and, you know, Tim Payne come under a little bit of pressure, as you normally would do. You know, if you're losing a test match at Headingley, you're losing a couple of test matches in Australia, your captain comes 
mm. you know, under a bit of pressure, which 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 is normal. Did you see that that Vaughny, uh, from uh, your neck of the woods? Yeah, um, I just thought the ball too short. You know, I think it was as simple as that. I thought they got a little bit uh, in that mindset of trying to intimidate India with short stuff. Um, I thought it was quite simple. They just need to bowl a few yards a little bit fuller, um, try and find the outside. As you know, again, it's, it's easy sat, sat on my sofa here in the UK, freezing my, my uh, kind of knackers off in a way. But uh, it, it looked to me like they got into that mindset, oh, we'll just roll India, uh, bowl short, try and intimidate them. Um, you know, I think the rotation is quite an interesting one. I think England have opted for this rotation for quite a while now because of the Broad Anderson situation. Uh, they made a pact that they weren't going to look to play uh, Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad together unless they had injuries. Uh, and that rotation has come uh, because of that, really. And then obviously the bio bubbles came into place, uh, particularly in India. Uh, they went for this rotation policy, which, you know, I didn't agree with, particularly against what I see as the best team in the world, India, in their own backyard. I just don't see how you're rotating uh, across those four games when, you know, you're trying to be this test team of, of, of note, trying to get up the rankings, trying to position yourself in a way to, to win in Australia a few months' time. So I didn't quite get England's rotation policy. But uh, um, it's always easy once, once you've won a series uh, for the likes of us to come in and criticise. But I thought it was quite... Simple. I thought over the course of the series, I mean, again, I've not got all the Hawkeye data, but from the visual eye watching it on the screen, I just thought the Aussies bought a little bit too short. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Nathan Lyon not uh, getting a lot of wickets in the Australian summer was costly to Australia winning, you know, not winning those test matches. I thought his um, tactics were a little bit negative, to be honest. You know, I, I think setting the field back and... Do you wait. think that's a captain? Do you well, think that's captain well, or I bowling? think it's both. If I'm bowling right, when I used to bowl, I couldn't bowl very well, but I would I would know what field I would want. So to me, the bowler should have more of a, a say on what field he's got. I don't know whether that happens or not, whether Tim Payne... I'm sure there's chit-chat about it, but yeah. I, I think the bowler should take more responsibility for the fields that are being set. 